Hello everyone, welcome to a short tutorial video on how to use the DWC-1000 D-Lynx Unified Wireless Controller to create a profile, edit it, and push it out to your access point. Let's begin by logging into our browser using 192.168.10.1, the default IP of the login page, which will bring you to the login prompt where you type your username and your password. By default, it is lowercase admin as the username and the password is also lowercase admin. Let's log in. Once you're logged in, select the advanced tab at the top and on the menu column on the left, AP profile. This will bring up the access point profile list where you can see that there is one profile by default and its profile status is associated. This means that there is already one access point that this controller has managed and that this profile has already been pushed out to it. Let's go ahead and click Add so we can create a second profile. From here, in the Profile Global Configuration, we can create a new name. Let's call this one Daily. And for the hardware type, we get to select which model of access points that we want to push out this profile to. I'm going to leave it at Any by default. And also, we can select which VLAN ID of the profiles that we want to push it out to. So again, by default, I will leave it at VLAN ID of 1. Let's click Save Settings and click AP Profile again. This will show that the daily profile has been created and its profile status is configured. At this point, configured means that we've created the profile, but we have yet to push it out to our access points. Let's continue by selecting the daily profile and configure the radio. From here, it'll bring up the settings to change the 2.4 frequency or the 5 gigahertz frequency, um, also known as the 802.11an, which is the 5, or the 802.11bgn, which is the 2.4. Whatever changes that you make here, you'd have to save the settings first before you change the second frequency. So for example, let's turn off the 5 GHz frequency by selecting 802.11a and selecting the state of off. We'll save the settings first. It will turn that radio off. And then let's make changes to the 2.4 by selecting the 802.11bg and n. In this short video example, I'm not going to go through every setting here, but it's a good idea to click on the help side on the right which will bring up more definitions and as to what each setting does. Um, for this example, let's go ahead and change the channel bandwidth to 40 megahertz. Once the changes are made, again, I have to save the settings. And let's click back to AP Profile, where I can make adjustments to configure the SSID. From here, I can click on the AP of the one I wish to control, and I can change its ID, for example, to the lobby, a little code next to it, and then I can select uh, the authentication method, whether to use a local database, a radius a database, or just to disable it. I can make adjustments to my uh, WPA and WPA2 security versions here. Um, let's say, for example, I only want to use WPA2 and I only want to use the encryption ciphers of AES. Uh, let's go ahead and save our settings. And let's finalize our daily profile by actually having the AP use it. Let's click on Setup. We'll go to AP Management, and let's look for our valid access points. Now this MAC address is the actual AP that I want this profile to use. Currently, it's using the first default profile. I'm going to go ahead and hit, put the checkbox here.
click edit and from here I can change it to use the daily profile let's save our settings a warning sign will say as we push our profile out to our access point it will reset the access point are you sure you wish to reset it now that's a good reminder to not make any changes to active production profiles uh, active production access points while there are still users connected to it uh, you probably want to wait for a maintenance window towards the uh, later hours of business so it doesn't impact as much clients let's go ahead and make these changes now the AP will reset and at this point while it's resetting it will already say that this profile is running the daily profile that which we've created and adjusted let's go ahead and check our status let's take a look over at the access point AP summary now at this point the status for that access point is failed because it's still rebooting let's uh, give it a few minutes just refresh it and wait for it to go through its boot cycle before we continue it appears that, that access point is back up again and it's now being seen as managed by our controller let's go ahead and make more adjustments to our profile let's click on the advanced tab at the top which will bring up the AP profile menu on the left select that again and we'll notice now that with the daily profile it is now associated let's click on it to configure the radio from here let's turn our 5 gigahertz frequency back on save our settings let's select the AP profile again this will set the profile to an associated and modified status which means that the daily profile has been edited but it has not been pushed out to an access point that's currently running the daily profile. What we want to do is to apply it by selecting the checkbox and clicking apply. This will once again bring up a warning which says that if we were to push out these edits that we've made to the daily profile it will reset the access point. Again a brief warning this should not be done during a production time when there are still customers or people that are still using the access point as they will all drop their connections. The daily profile is now set at apply requested. If we click refresh once more, it should change to associated. This means that our changes and our edits made to the daily profile of turning on the 5 gigahertz frequency is now applied to all the access points that were running its profile. Well, this concludes our video for how to create a profile, how to push it out to our access point, and how to make adjustments to it. For more information, please check out the help section on the right as to what each term and each setting does. It's a great way to troubleshoot um, issues that you see uh, by looking through and uh, selecting different settings that uh, you might see as being more uh, adept for your network environment. Thank you very much for watching this video. For more helpful videos, please check out support.dlink.com.